Well, thank you everyone for coming out. And the nice thing about this is my fellow veterans of Vietnam. We have the first Iraq War in Bosnia. We have the second Iraq War. And you guys are my cronies to take off from that very negative ad that's out there that has been used against my reputation. And the thing is, I am just so proud because I have spent 30 years working with you and people like you. And I have been so honored to do that. Vietnam was winding down and a lot of men weren't joining. There were a few of us brave enough still to do it, Don, myself. And uh, we got a, I got a lot of harassment for joining. I shouldn't do this, I couldn't do this, I was called names for doing it. But I just hung in there because having a father who was a Marine, I really believed in service to my country. Rah. <laughs> um, and my first assignment over in Korea, there's actually three women officers on the whole army base of about 10,000 men. I spent every day having people try not to salute me. So every day I'd have to reteach them how to do it. And so every day was a struggle, knowing that when I walked out of the office, there was going to be someone trying to be disrespectful. But boy, it helps having a dad who was a Marine, because <laughs> I knew exactly what I could take and not take. Well, as I wrapped up my career in 2006, to my surprise, I stayed 30 years. Never expected to. I thought, I'll just stay as long as it's fun. Stayed 30 years, a colonel, brigade commander, Army War College. Never thought I'd turn into one of those old, old guys that I remembered as a young officer, but I guess I did. Um, but I was asked right before I retired, and Marty, you were part of this uh, ceremony. I was asked to present a saber to Sergeant Dusty. He is a sergeant here in Illinois. He lost both his hands over in the war. And on his left hand, he had enough of a wrist to have a prosthetic device, but on his right hand, not much. So he just wears a little swath of blue silk over his wrist. I'm holding this saber thinking, how am I giving this to him, this heavy saber? And it's written on my face. And Sergeant Dusty looks at me and he goes, don't worry, ma'am, I've got it. <laughs> So I put the saber between the prongs, and then he took his stump, and he pushed it down, and he saluted me. The finest salute any officer could ever receive in his or her career. And this is the sergeant that my opponent voted against when he voted against the GI Bill, when he voted against funding for Veterans Affairs, when he voted against funding for more doctors and for housing and for jobs. He voted against Sergeant Dusty. And as every one of us in the military knows, when you're in the military, you don't have a voice. That's, right. That's your job, to stay quiet and do your job. But I'm now retired. And one thing I learned in the Army War College, they always said, watch out for those colonels who are retiring. <laughs> <laughs> we tend to speak our mind. First of all, I do want to end the war in Iraq. And what we haven't seen is a vision and a strategy and how to do it. People argue benchmarks, timetables. You know, the real point is our government, our civilian leadership needs to say, what do we want it to look like at the end? And then we'll come up with the strategy and we'll do it. That's what the military is good at. And then we need to look at Afghanistan. We're backsliding there. And that's where the enemy was and is. And we've been diverted from that. We've got to take care of that. We've got to work with our allies, our moderate Muslim allies. We've got to re-engage Turkey, Jordan, Kuwait, other countries who understand that part of the world and help the Iraqis stand up. And then we need to bring our young people home and take care of them. And that's more than veterans of care. It's college. It's transitioning to jobs. And I want to see some creative pilots out there working with the community colleges to help these young people realize they have skills already. Where can they go with these skills? But also train our teachers and professors to look for the problems. Our parents have been taking care of these young kids. There's such a horrendous rate of suicide right now in the military. There's a horrendous rate of spousal abuse. We've got to address these issues. And it's more than just the mother. We've got to train uh, people, the employers, the teachers. Because you know what? Young men, young men like Adam, are not going to wave their hand and say, something's wrong with me. Young men don't do that, especially young warriors. So we've got to get some programs going, especially here in Illinois. Let's make this the pilot state. 
and then we got to help with the housing, help with the job transition, and then we need to just take care of all of us. And part of ending this war is bringing that money home and taking care of us. Now there is one thing we've got to stay aware of. I was very concerned the other day when McCain said that he's been tested and the enemy won't test him. Every president has been tested. Carter was tested with their Iranian hostages. Reagan was tested with the Marine, the bombing of the Marine barracks in Lebanon. Um, George Bush was tested. Bill Clinton was tested. George W. Bush and all of us were tested with 9-11. To say we won't be tested is to mean we won't be prepared. We need, as the Army says, prepare for the worst, pray for the best. We need to prepare our country and be ready. And we need to strengthen our military, strengthen our homeland security. Those are the experiences I can bring. But I need you guys. There's a lot of veterans who don't understand all these votes against them. So I need each one of you calling up every veteran you know in this district. I need you willing to come out and help me on election day, whether it's poll watching, handing out materials, knocking on doors. I could use you this weekend. I can't do it without you, but I am doing it for you. So I'd love to be your voice in Washington, a voice for vets. Thank you so much for coming out, and thank you for your service. Yeah. Yeah.